Devin Dubnik gave up a bad goal last night against the Boston Bruins and was pulled after three, but he's back in tonight and he's been better than his two six and one October, as have most of the Edmonton Oilers. Roberto Luongo, a traditional slow starter, is two to form. He's heating up. His save percentage was 909 in October, 913 in November, 960 in the first three starts of December. The referees to handle the game tonight, Dennis LaRue and Frederick McQuie, Ryan Galloway and Mark Wheeler are the linesmen. So the hot line will start against the top line. The hot line for Vancouver, Ryan Kessler and the aforementioned Mike Santarelli on the right side, Chris Higgins on the left against Ryan Nugent Hopkins who plays a home game. He grew up playing at the Burnaby Winter Club. Not far from here, Jordan Everly on his right wing and a red hot David Perron who has scored five goals in five games and ten since the first of November on the left side. Philip Larson and Andrew DeFerrance are the defensemen back for the puck and clear it to center. Chris Tanev out with the defendable Dan Hamhus as the starting D pair for the Vancouver Canucks and Tanev has the puck. His pass up the middle for a tip in by Kessler and the Canucks will start a four check. Larson is back and out of the way of a hit but turned over the puck. Santarelli was right there and couldn't set up Higgins. Kessler again barging in, knocked Larson down, Everly along the boards, double teamed by the aggressive Canucks forecheck, and they keep the puck in. Higgins on a backhander, a weak one, rebound, Santarelli can't bury it. Back out in front, Higgins shoots, that's blocked. Another chance, Chris Higgins again had the puck in his feet. What a start for this hot Vancouver line. Ham Hughes, Bieksa just off the bench, deflected wide of the net. Crazy bounce out in front. No one knew where the puck was, and Kessler found it. In some feet, David Perron with a hard clearing attempt. Dan Ham Hughes holds the line for Vancouver. Moves the puck into Mike Santarelli to Chris Higgins with another shot. And Dubnik stopped that. Larson's been in a bit of trouble here, and he's trying to clear the puck again with the help of the center, Ryan Nugent Hopkins. And Vancouver starts to change with tremendous pressure still on. And the puck finally gets out to center, and the orders will start a change. Jordan Everly still can't get off. On come the Sedins with Yannick Hansen for Vancouver, trying to keep the pressure on. Ference and Larson have yet to be able to change. Mark Arcobello out with Alex Hemsky and Taylor Hall, the line that went together last night against Boston in the second period, come out for Edmonton. Anton Belloff plays the puck back to Jeff Petrie, and the orders are in trouble against a great forecheck again. Daniel Sedin and Yannick Hansen got to that defense, and they stay on them with Daniel in front of the net. Hansen working feverishly to Henrik. He missed the pass. And Alex Hemsky starts out to center, but that's as far as he gets. And back come the Vancouver Canucks. Daniel Sedin couldn't get the puck in deep. Taylor Hall takes over. Here's Mark Arcabello. Elevated to a second line center position. Sam Gagne's been demoted to the fourth line tonight. Yannick Weber, he's been out for a long time, playing on defense here with Ryan Stanton right now. Weber's been down in Utica, the Canucks farm team in the American League. Over and back at the blue line, the owners have to tag up. Stanton up the middle, picked off. Yakupov sent the puck in. There's Boyd Gordon, who's missed a half a dozen games with a shoulder injury. He's back in the lineup. Good, dependable third-line center. They welcome him back, and their best face-off man. Canucks have barely been in their own end for the first three minutes of the game, and they get out of there right now. Nick Schultz is back with Justin Schultz on the order defense. There's Justin, number 19, from British Columbia. West Bank, just outside Kelowna. Dumped the puck in. Dale Weiss with Brad Richardson. Tanev plays the puck to Jason Garrison. And he's out to David Booth, number seven, on the left wing for Vancouver. Weiss goes to the net. Booth snaps a shot. That went off Weiss in front of the goal. Along the boards here, Zach Dolpe, number 21, twisting and turning. Larson pushed him down, took the puck away, and now he'll try and move it out, but he'll need some help. Ryan Jones gives him that and gets the puck to center. Chris Tanev to Jason Garrison and up the middle. And everybody's been into the game now as there's been continuous action. Good chance for everybody to get their feet out of them. And almost four minutes of continual play. And for the Edmonton Oilers, really important to survive that early storm. As advertised, that Kessler line got things started. Tortorella goes with the Sedins after. And a couple of good chances that the Oilers survive. And that Kessler line is coming back on. There's Ryan Kessler with an outlet. Jeremy Walsh still on the ice. Number 13 didn't get the puck deep, and he'll want to change now. Out to center, Hemsky had the puck go off his skate. Ryan Stanton, great pickup off the waiver wire from Chicago, playing with Kevin Bieksa. 
They start out of their own zone. Great pass to Kessler. Just barely got by Everly at center. Moves the puck back into Mike Santarelli. Hard around to Chris Higgins. Head up, feeds Stanton at the blue line. And he'll throw the puck at the net. It's deflected over top by Santarelli. And hits the netting out of play. And finally a stop in play. Four minutes and 31 seconds in. Well, some great action early on. You know the Canucks haven't played since Monday. The Oilers coming off back-to-back -back nights. And some early pressure. Dubnik can't control the rebound. But Santarelli able to stay on it. Why do you start with this line? Look at how effective they've been. Of this five-game stretch where the Vancouver Canucks have won five in a row, four of the game winners have come from this group. Higgins and Santarelli have a little bit of history together playing in Florida. Florida. Santarelli was signed as a free agent for the minimum. They didn't even put him in their guidebook in the <laughs> Vancouver section. He was in the Utica section. He really has been the story early on. And you got to remember, he's had a 20-goal year in Florida back in 2011. And it's a homecoming for him, too, and he loves playing in his hometown. He's another graduate of the Burnaby Winter Club Minor Hockey Association. Anton Beloff pushes the puck to center. Daniel Sedin moves back in. The right winger on this line, Alex Burrows, is out with a broken jaw, so there's been a revolving door of right wingers. Yannick Hansen gets that spot to start with tonight. Ham Hughes with a shot, knocked down by Anton Beloff. And the big Russian defenseman moved the puck to center. No offense yet from the owners. Back in come the Sedins. Henrik waiting for some help. Off the bench comes Zach Cassian. He snaps a shot. Dubnik the save. Can't control it. But the puck is swept away from in front of the net. Yes, Uensu. Back defensively, number six. Now he pushes Henrik Sedin down and tries to take the puck away from him. It's squirted out from underneath. And the play is stopped on a hand pass. Well, really important here for the Edmonton Oilers that Dubnik responds. A difficult night, a horrific goal last night. Uh, the first one really sunk the bench for Edmonton. And here early, you know the pressure's coming. It's a tough building to play in. Dubnik able to make the save, absorb a little bit of a hit. And, Jim, I think one thing you have to control in this building is those second and third chances. For Devin, he's going to have to deal with those rebounds, get him into the corner and out of danger. 5 nothing. the shots on goal in the first Five and a half minutes of the game. There's an icing call against the Oilers, so the faceoff will stay in their zone. And quickly, John Tortorella changes and sends the hotline back on the ice. Well, here's the reality of the Edmonton Oilers. So much has been talked about the goaltending troubles. He struggled early on. Even on this best stretch that he's had this year, you still have to score four goals. And at times, that can be a difficult task. Especially against this team right now. Vancouver's given up three goals overall on their homestand. At the side of the net. Dubnik was hugging the post with Higgins there. Santarelli and Kessler with him as they came back on in the icing call. Mike Santarelli, Chris Higgins. Kessler goes to the front of the net. That's been a good idea for him lately. He's really cashed in a lot. Now he has to go to the boards for the puck. He'll try and carry it out front. Ran into Yakupov. And a bouncing puck gets by Jason Garrison. Santarelli stole the puck. And as he did, it's an offside call against Vancouver. Still no score, but all Vancouver in the early going on a special edition of CBC's Hockey Night in Canada. The game puck to his dad, Jan, in Sweden, who's a carpenter, and wakes up early to watch every one of his son's games. Now, John Tortorella said it's also very important that his players see him as a good goalie and not simply someone to fill the net on nights to give Roberto some time off. Jim? And he'll be along tomorrow night as a guest in After Hours, and that'll be colorful because he's a colorful guy. 8 of 12 points as a backup. That's pretty good. I don't think you'll get a start here. In no, I don't think nights. on the weekend either. Right? That rest this week for the Vancouver Canucks gives Luongo a chance. Here's a 2-on-1 chance. David Perron didn't get a shot. He was poke checked by Chris Tanev, the lone defenseman back on a 2-on-1 with Jordan Everly and David Perron. And David Perron has cashed in most of those. Santarelli Gets the puck to center. In the early going, it's been head-to-head. -head. The Nugent Hopkins line against Ryan Kessler's hot line. Here comes Nugent Hopkins. He shoots, and Luongo has to make his first save. Seven minutes in. And it's a pretty good shot by Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Here's Chris Higgins with a shooting. Got out of the way of a check from Luke Gadzik. Stopping behind his net. Jeff Petrie paired on defense with Anton Belloff. There's a giveaway kept in by the Sedins. Henrik trying to set up Yannick Hansen on the pass from Daniel, and that was broken up. 
Kanye up the boards, Kasdick. And Ryan Jones get the puck to center. And it's knocked out of the air by a high stick, so the play is stopped. Well, David Perron, the hottest of the Edmonton Oilers here, going down his off wing, goes right into the middle, just hesitates for a split second. Excellent read by Tanev with a good stick. And then Newton Hopkins is starting to shoot the puck a little bit more. Had a great goal the other night on a quick wrister. Gets one up high on Roberto Luongo. Gets a little bit of a tip from Coach Dallas Aikens. That's going to be a great battle if that lineup continues. Kessler against Nugent Hopkins. Good test for both of them. Absolutely. There's Taylor Hall with Mark Arcabello. And Alex Hemsky, another very talented line. There's Taylor Hall to the front of the net. And another good stick. This time, Brad Richardson poked the puck away. Justin Schultz just about coughed that up to Brad Richardson. Nick Schultz, rink wide. Hemsky has to turn, gets possession and gains the attacking line. His shot was blocked by Ryan Stanton. And back come the Canucks, two on one. Hall back checking the trainer. Cassian stopped by Devin Dubnik. In deep, Kevin Bieksa to the front of the net. And the orders reject that. Arcabello, though, couldn't clear it. Bieksa got back, held the puck in. Booth with his shot. And that dropped Justin Schultz. And he's hurt and slow to get back up as the Canucks are just too quick to every puck for the Oilers right now. Yeah, it's the turnover problems. It started with Schultz at the offensive blue line, and then twice Arcabello had chances in his own zone. And you're right, right now the pressure of this four check giving the Oilers some trouble in their own zone. It's taken a while, but over the course of the first 33 games, this four check that John Tortorella wants has been getting better and better. And they don't give up the two-on-ones and three-on-twos that they had been giving up because of it. Well, and the one thing for the Edmonton Oilers, a young team, it's trying not to make those mistakes. Puck control is so important. Hemsky doesn't get it deep. Schultz blows a wheel, and that creates a three-on-two back the other way. Great save by Devin Dubnik there to control things around. And here's the plays that you can't make. In your own zone, inside the blue line, Arcabello twice can't get the puck out. And Schultz pays the price with the block. The Canucks were just too aggressive for him. He had to hesitate for just a second, and the puck was gone. Henrik and Daniel Sedin with Yannick Hansen out against the Nugent Hopkins line this time. Andrew Ferris clears the puck out of his own zone, and the captain of the Canucks, Henrik, is back to get it. Dan Hanhuis on his 31st birthday advances the puck to center no further. Nugent Hopkins will chase the dependable Chris Tanev, who blew a tire but still made the pass. Hanhuis. The center with the shooting. That's on Henrik Sedin's side. Daniel right there with him. Hansen the third forward. Now Dale Weiss stays up high. He's just come on. As Hopkins gets to center and dumps the puck, he and Tanev's the first man back. Reading that. Nugent Hopkins pushed off the puck by Daniel Sedin. Everly and Tanev battle. Jeff Petrie from the blue line on the other side. Anton Belov with his shot. Coming off the knob of the stick of Roberto Luongo to the end boards. And Tanev has an outlet pass to Dale Weiss. Both teams are changing as Weiss gets into the attacking zone. Zach Tolpe is with him. Belloff was knocked down but stayed with the puck and made a play. Sam Gagne to David Perron. Ryan Jones up through the middle. There's the shoot-in and Luan goes out to play the puck. They play it for Ryan Stanton but it got by him. So Belloff is able to pinch and try and hold it in but Stanton wouldn't let it. It'll be interesting to see if Dallas Aikens does change that matchup. He had Nugent Hopkins that time away from Kessler. It's a tough task, though, when you go away from Kessler and have to deal with Henrik Sedin. There's a giveaway by Belloff and allowed Santarelli to hold the puck in, but the owners don't have to pay for it. Jones gets the puck out to center. He turned it over on an aggressive neutral zone fourth check. There they come again. Kessler, Santarelli, and Higgins up the board. Sweet casting into the middle of the ice. Jones will get to the puck. He's in on Ryan Stanton. He's got some help in Gagne coming behind him, but Stanton broke the play up. Nick Schultz pinched, and now he's caught. Kessler at center. It's a two-on-one. Santorelli. Bieksa. The return pass went off the stick of Taylor Hall. The forward and only man back. Mike Santorelli. Chased by Taylor Hall. The pass to the blue line. Bieksa holds it in. Bieksa's had a good aggressive offensive start as a defenseman tonight. In on the action. Oilers are trying to change and the puck's right at their bench. Kessler stole the puck away. Looks towards the net. Tipped by Chris Higgins in behind the goal. Santarelli to Garrison. Back to Santarelli. Higgins watched by Philip Larson off the boards. Higgins chips the puck back. And Garrison will just hold it in. Larson against Santarelli. Side of the net. The pass for Kessler from Higgins went off the goaltender. 
And out comes Alish Hemsky to center. This is a four on two rush. Taylor Hall, Philip Larson, and he shot the puck way wide of the net. Really wasn't in his wheelhouse to shoot. Brad Richardson back the other way. His pass off the boards to Zach Cassian. To the front of the net, the rebound off the goaltender eluded David Booth, and the Oilers come back the other way. Yes, he UN suit. Giveaway there by Richardson and a hot shot by Neil Yakupov. And Roberto Luongo makes just his second save of the game. What a fast paced game. Very few whistles. We passed the midway mark. The shot's officially 9 3 in favor of the Vancouver Canucks over the Oilers, but the game awaits its first goal. CBC's Hockey Night in Canada, a special Friday night edition. And this is the one thing you want to protect your best centerman. And right off the draw, you can see a little chatting between the two. But when the puck gets dropped, it's all business. A little hacking and whacking. One thing Kessler will try to do is establish early, but look at their pushback by Nugent Hopkins. Right now, Hopkins 0 for 3 in the draws. Kessler 2 and 0 against number 93. Canucks are a better face-off team. That might change a little bit with Boyd Gordon back tonight. Right now it's Arcabello against Henrik Sedin who wins the draw in his own zone. Yannick Hansen. Henrik Sedin, his backhand pass ends up in the corner. And Henrik gets the puck back. Hansen's in front, the pass. Arcabello collapsed defensively and moved the puck to Taylor Hall. Hemsky whiffed on a pass and turned the puck over. Back come the Sedins. Henrik for Daniel. A cross ice, what a pass. Stanton shoots, Dubnik the save. And the rebound is taken and cleared by Jeff Petrie, but he put it off escape. Sedin's with a chance to move back in. Henrik to Daniel, looking around again. Hansen with his shot, and a nice save by Dubnik. And another rebound is cleared, but not out. Kept in by Kevin Bieksa. Baylor Hall. Arcabello, I think, got a stick in the face in that pile up and he's going slowly back to the bench doubled over as he got to the bench Tim too many offensive zone turnovers right at the blue line in the neutral zone the Oilers are giving the Vancouver Canucks that easy offense they don't they don't have the time they think they have Jordan Everly with Nugent Hopkins and Perron they're out against the Kessler line again and the way this game has started, I'm sure John Tortorella likes that matchup. There's an icing call against Vancouver. And you can see Arcabello on the bench dealing with something. But the turnovers early on here have been what have been fueling the Vancouver Canucks offense. A bouncing puck, a bad pass by Hemsky, and then it's back the other way. And like they do so often, a couple of quick passes through a seam. Another solid save by Devin Dubnik. But way too many odd man rushes against for the Oilers early. The Oilers changed up on the icing call and put their fourth line with Sam Gagne centering Gazdick and Jones on the ice against the Kester line. So he wants to free up, at least for now, that Nugent Hopkins group. Andrew Ferentz from the blue line holds the puck in. Dan Hamhuis has some space and some time. And he gets the puck up the boards. Higgins advanced it. Ferentz is back. Off the boards, Gagne. Got lucky to get the puck out. But Vancouver has it back in the neutral zone, and the Canucks are changing on the fly as Jason Garrison comes back for the puck. Yannick Weber tracked down and checked by Jones. Puck's picked up by Uensu. He tried to pass in front. It went off a Canuck, and Luongo had to be sharp with his left leg. David Booth against the pinching Beloff. Now Beloff's got to get back. Skating back up the middle is Zach Cassian. Dumps the puck in for Vancouver. David Booth right on it. Brad Richardson, number 15, couldn't control it. There's Boyd Gordon. Bounces the puck up the boards, didn't get it out. The Canucks kept it in again. Gordon stays on it. Outside the blue line, Garrison swatted the puck in. I guess it didn't get out. I thought that was over the blue line. I thought it was too. It looked like it was a good couple inches over. No harm done. There'd have been a big argument had that puck ended up in the net. Zach Cassian off the wing. Dalpy with his shot. Missed the net from a sharp angle and sends the puck back out into the neutral zone. Ryan Stanton is there. Kevin Bieksa up offensively again. Gets the puck deep. All before checking. Dale Weiss is there. They came to see Vancouver's fourth line. Have a good look at them here because they don't play an awful lot. Trying to earn some more ice time. Jeremy Walsh with Zach Dolpe. Dale Weiss. Stanton. Too hot to handle for Kevin Bieksa. And that might cause some trouble. Hemsky. Taylor Hall. Hemsky. Stopped by Luongo.
Great chance against the run of play and a great rolling save by Roberto Luongo with the shots 11-5 Vancouver. Here's Henrik Sedin off the bench. Tanev held the puck in against Hemsky. Dan Hamhuis for Daniel Sedin in a phone booth with Yannick Hansen and his brother. And the puck comes around to Chris Tanev. Nick Schultz is without a stick. The Sedins usually try to take advantage of that. Coming off the bench is Santarelli as the Canucks change quickly. Santarelli was alone in front with the pass and escape. Daniel Sedin hard to the front of the net. Kessler couldn't get the puck. And Hughes holds it in. The Oilers could use a whistle here. Kessler with a pass to Tanev. Fakes the shot. Takes the shot. Dubnik the save. The rebound is loose. Kicked back to him by Daniel Sedin. And Dubnik will cover up. One of the best chances of the period for the Oilers, who haven't had many, was a two-on-one chance. Taylor Hall to Alish Hemsky and a little Johnny Bauer poke. Well, the Oilers have withstood the storm, and now they've got a couple of chances. And you mentioned that fourth-line shift, the end of the shift, a good body check by Jones, and a play, Yuensu with a rebound off of Garrison that Roberto Luongo had to be sharp. And how about Hemsky? That's a veteran goaltender in Roberto Luongo, knowing the tendencies of a veteran player on the other side. That's our view from the net camp for LASIK MD. That's one of Hemsky's favorite moves, that little forehand, backhand, and Luongo read it perfectly. Oilers haven't had very good first periods. They've been able to get better as the games go on. I thought last night they looked like they were a little intimidated by the Boston Bruins, fell down three to nothing, and then played a pretty good game but couldn't come back. And tonight they've been hemmed in their own zone, largely for the first 16 minutes of the period. I think, you know, for Dallas Akins, this has all been a process. And you mentioned last night's game. The difficulties in the first period were brought back with a good second and a really strong third. And that's part of the process of trying to build this kind of team. It's been a frustrating start for the new head coach, but progress is being made. They've been outscored 36-24 in first periods. This is somewhat typical of Vancouver season, too. They, like a lot of teams around the league, lament the fact that they don't score much. Well, especially with the week off, and John Tortorella thought his team was tired, gave them a couple days off. There's Daniel Sedin to the front of the net. Henrik going to the net, went into the goaltender with the defenseman, Philip Larson. There's going to be a penalty on the play, and it's going to be Henrik Sedin for running into the goaltender. Alice Hemsky. Crushed into the boards by Yannick Hansen on a back check and the first, the only penalty of the game so far will go to Vancouver's captain Henrik Sedin and the Oilers get a late first period power play. Well, one thing you haven't seen very often is the Sedins going pointless in a couple of games. So here early on trying to get to the tough areas. No question on this. The collision right in front is Henrik hits Larson. Another look from our LASIK MD vision camera in the net. Devin Dubnik takes the punishment and then gets off to the bench. So the order power play goes to work here. There's lots of talent on it. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, David Perron, Taylor Hall up front. Justin Schultz and Jordan Everly. Four forwards and an offensive defenseman on this power play. Nugent Hopkins. Perron is screening and Hopkins lost the puck in his skates. Vancouver's the best penalty killing team in the league. Higgins takes the shot, and it's off the shoulder of Dubnik, and the Oilers have given up seven shorthanded goals, and when you see the personnel of their power play, you sort of understand how that could happen. And for Nugent Hopkins, you think of him where he's most effective, maybe on the half wall or down low. Here, he gets out high, and an opportunity to challenge Higgins gets without hesitation, and this is one thing that the Vancouver penalty killers are very effective on. They don't give you any time or space, and they really will attack you. Brad Richardson went straight to the net on that faceoff. Ian Santarelli out as the penalty killing forwards right now. The Exa and Garrison on the back end. Penalty killing for Vancouver has been good all season, but it got up to number one when Alex Burroughs came back. Now they miss him right now, but they're in sync. And they don't give up much when they're shorthanded. And the Oilers have just gone offside and killed 48 seconds of their power play. Well, the one thing you will do against this Oilers power play is try to push it offensively. The last two games, they've given up two of those seven 
shorthanded goals that lead the National Hockey League. And a little bit of a risky play in the offensive zone. Too many odd man rushes and trying to get your power play in sync offensively. And right now, defensively, they have struggled through the early part of the season. Last year, the Buffalo Sabres gave up seven shorthanded goals in 48 games to lead the NHL. The others have given that up in 33 this year. Second power play unit is still four forwards and an offensive defenseman. Philip Larson is back at the blue line. It's Hemsky, Uensu is a net presence. Yakupov and Arcabello up front. Larson, young Dane, great skater, moves the puck to Mark Arcabello. Is shooting. Yakupov quickly got to it along the boards. Yes, Uensu scoops the puck over to Arcabello. Larson, the last man back at the blue line into Hamsky. He's quickly checked by Dan Hamhuis and right in sync. Higgins cleared the puck. There's another example there of just continued pressure. Great support, good positioning. They just don't give you time to get the easy set up and get your head up and make a play. The dying seconds of this Henrik Sedin penalty and the Oilers haven't been able to get a sniff with a man advantage. Richardson to center dumps the puck in. Seems like when teams get zoned in on a penalty kill like this, it's, it's almost like they want a penalty so that they can keep it going. It feels so comfortable shorthanded, and that's the way this team has been for a little while. You get the sense of the energy. I mean, their intensity actually increased. And a lot of times on the power plays, guys come out and think they're going to have all kinds of time to get the set up and make a play, and that's what they've been taking advantage of. So the Oilers are... 0 for 1 on the man advantage, outshot 13 to 4. And moving out of their own zone, David Perron dumps the puck in. Hamhuis will hold him up just a little bit so Tanev can be first to the puck. Nugent Hopkins around on the other side. Anton Bella pinches down, holds the puck in for Perron. He's checked by Tanev. He's supported by Yannick Hansen who gets the puck to center. Belov turned away from Daniel Sedin, wisely went up the boards, but the Canucks got the puck back. Daniel had to wait for Hansen to get onside. Hamhuis with a shot. Dubnik with a save. The rebound, he poked that to Nugent Hopkins, who clears it. That's mission accomplished, though, on the road, back-to-back -back nights. The fact that the Oilers can get through the first period of tie game, a pretty good start, despite the fact that Vancouver's had most of the play offensively. Yeah, who cares about the shot Absolutely. Clock? Look at the scoreboard, and... Get through a tough first period on the road. The shot clock says Vancouver was in the attacking zone a lot. 14 to 4 with the shots on goal, but Devin Dubnik was good. The Oilers got a couple of chances in the late going, and they get out of the first period in a scoreless tie on the road against the Vancouver Canucks. Back second period about to get underway between Vancouver and Edmonton. I had a chance to speak to Oilers assistant coach Keith Acton, and I didn't even ask him a question yet. He looked right at me and said, we survived that first period. Of course, alluding to last night, giving up three goals in the first period. He said, but we need to get out of survival mode. We have to get out of our zone, but he does credit Devin Dubnik coming up with some big saves. They're out shot 14-4, keeping them in this game. Jim. Well, there was some concern in Vancouver that this would be a bit of a trap game with Boston here, and it'll be 890 days since the Bruins were here <laughs> and won the Stanley Cup when they visit tomorrow on Hockey Night in Canada. But the Canucks didn't go easy on the Oilers in the first period, did they? No, not at all. And you, you think of the Oilers, talk about a tough road trip, too. They go from here to Anaheim to Los Angeles and then end up in Colorado. So this first game, a real important one for them. Philip Larson, deep in his own zone as the puck was shot in, and Alex Hamsky gets it out. Mark Arcabello will be the four checker as Kevin Bieksa glides back for a rolling puck. Santorelli couldn't get it. Taylor Hall into the middle of the ice. Hemsky, Andrew Ferris across the ice. Hall with a sharp angle shot one off the outside of the post, and another shot by Arcabello was blocked. Good start for the Oilers in the attacking zone here. Arcabello trying to track down the puck. It's against this. Santarelli, Higgins, and Kessler line, and they're out to center. And Kessler dumps the puck in. Vancouver changes on the fly. Long change, second period. The Sedins come on with Yannick Hansen. Philip Larson, Arcabello to Hall. And he'll just lob the puck in so the Oilers can get a change. And the Canucks will try and take advantage, and just about did. Henrik Sedin for Yannick Hansen. The pass went off his skate. That long change for the defense, you have to be sharp, and Petrie was just a little bit late getting on. And maybe make sure you get the puck a little deeper than that. Here's Jordan Everly after the puck against Henrik City. 
Tanev couldn't cut him off. Nugent Hopkins was pushed off the puck in an outlet again for Hanson got by him. Beloff is the first man back. Already, Jim, a little better offensive push by the Oilers, a little bit more speed, a little attack, and some offensive zone time. Jeff Petrie leads a rush here. Everly spins to get away from David Booth. Spins again and dumps the puck in deep. Garrison is back. Up the boards for David Booth. And he'll turn and start a breakout. Passes behind Cassian. Yannick Weber. David Booth with Richardson, the centerman with him. Fell off and Everly are back. Canucks win the battle on the boards. Brad Richardson cycles back. Got it by Everly from behind the net. The wraparound by Boots. Cassian was there as well, but Dubnik stopped him from the blue line. Garrison shot. Dubnik with another save. In comes Weber, pinching from the right side. Chased by Borg Gordon and stopped. And the puck climbed up the glass. And off the netting, stopping play. Coming up Sunday night at 7 on CBC TV, catch the timeless holiday classic, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And at 8, Tim Allen magically takes Santa's place in the Santa Claus. For our full holiday schedule, visit cbc.ca slash holiday. Well, David Booth with a nice play down low. A bouncing puck gets by the Oiler defense, and the, that one for Devin Dubnik almost didn't get his stick down on his five hole, but able to stop the quick play. Over and back at the blue line here, there's an offside against Vancouver. You know, John Tortorella talking about the identity of his team on home ice. Uh, you think of the last homestand they had, a six-game homestand. They only won one of those games. And this one is a five-game homestand right now. They're 3-0. Oh, and you mentioned not looking past this game to the Boston Bruins. And I think with a week where they didn't have anything, a couple of days off, you wondered what this team was going to look like early on. Would they have that jump? Will they have early? story of that homestand was get leads and not be able to hold them. This homestand, they just haven't given anything up. Jeremy Welsh. Dale Weiss. Ryan Stanton. In for Zach Dolpe. And the puck squirted loose at the side of the net. Yessi Yuensu back to get it. And he threw it blindly across the ice and got lucky that got through to Yakupov, but he couldn't get it out. That's a big shift for the fourth line of Vancouver, too, as you mentioned. They don't see a whole lot of ice time, so offensive zone time might give John Tortorella a little bit more confidence. Here's Daniel Sedin back in. Henrik looking for Hansen. Daniel at the side of the net on a carom. Threw it out front. Just missed Henrik. Yuensu to Yakupov, and this is a big shift for this Kanye Yuensu yakupov group to get out of their own zone and get the change that the owners want right now. And they have. Gazdick has come on here with Ryan Jones and San Kanye against the Sedins. Gazdick pinching on him was Hamhus at center. Jones is there. And he's double teamed. Hamhus bounced the puck off Kanye. Got it up to center. And it can't sit late in the ship. Daniel Sedin falls in behind him. Goes wide and put the puck into the corner. Tanev along the boards. Couldn't get the puck to Daniel. And Sam Gagne got it to center. Tanev went up the ladder to knock it down, but the owners got it back. Gagne has Jones in front of the net, tried to make a move and couldn't get by Daniel Sedin, who's very late in his shift. Hansen is as well. He wants to dump the puck in and get off. Kessler goes in after him against Gastic. Jones up the boards for Gagne. And the puck drifted to Ryan Stanton. With Jason Garrison, and he'll just shoot the puck right back in for Vancouver. Higgins in against Hemsky. Lost a little battle for the puck. Luke Gazdick to center and no further. Stands into Mike Santarelli. Kessler up against Philip Larson. Santarelli looking for an outlet. He has Higgins in front of the net. Kessler in behind it. Goes back to the blue line and Garrison. D to D. Ryan Stanton slap pass and a tip by Kessler wide of the net. Santarelli back for Kessler just out of his reach. And Alex Hemsky gathers in the puck to Taylor Hall at center as Hemsky was dumped behind the play. Canucks get a turnover in the neutral zone. Here comes Higgins. Kessler shoots. Dubnik the save. He absorbed the shot and stopped play. Well, absorbing a shot is one thing. Absorbing a hit is what Alex Hemsky is feeling right now. It almost looked like he lost his wind on that. You know Kessler's coming. That's one thing I said about Kessler being at the center ice. He gets him involved, finishes the check. And that's a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder that Hemsky 
gingerly gets up and tries to get back in the play. Super slow-mo maybe doesn't do it justice. And yeah, that had knocked the wind out of you. Absolutely. This is probably as good as Kessler's played in a couple of years, this last stretch of games. He's healthy again. That's the main thing. Missed a lot of games. And it's skating, isn't it? And when they're playing well, this whole line as a group skates so well and attacks very effectively. Just offside. And when Ryan Kessler's on top of his game, Craig, he's the guy who really sets the pace of the Canucks game. Well, the one thing about John Tortorella is he'll play his top guys. This is your top forwards ice time in the National Hockey League. Sidney Crosby, of course, gets all kinds from Dan Bilesma. But Kessler gets a lot of responsibility on the penalty kill. And, Jim, you look at the Sedins. They're averaging almost a minute on the penalty kill per game, and that's why their average is up. In the last three years under Alain Vigneault, that was about five seconds a game on average. Nugent Hopkins with a shoot-in for Edmonton. Dan Hamhuis is the defenseman back. Oilers keep the puck in. Nugent Hopkins with Jordan Eberle. David Perron. Playing against Vancouver's third line right now, centered by Brad Richardson. And out of that scrum, the Oilers got the puck deep, but Hamhuis has the puck. Now this is a matchup for the Oilers that they should be able to take advantage of, especially now with an icing. It's time for the Smirnoff Icebreaker. Why not mix a Smirnoff Caesar? Smirnoff Vodka, the official vodka sponsor of the NHL. Oilers sent a good face-off man out. They had the icing call and decided to go with Boyd Gordon Bail Yakupov and Jesse Yuensu. Richardson's waved out and Booth has to take a draw. Gordon has to go too. Okay, so a win for Vancouver. They were excellent in the first period, winning 11 of 14 faceoffs. Here's Zach Cassian. Weber holds the puck in just wide of the net. Schultz with a play under pressure to Yakupov, who got the puck out to center. A shot right back in at Vancouver. Had a lot of guys on the ice in the midst of a change with a puck right there at the bench. And here's that fourth line again for the Canucks getting another shift quickly. Well, they earned it from the last one. Absolutely. It's been a work in progress trying to figure out who would be on the fourth line at Vancouver. Tom Sestito is hurt, so the tough guy doesn't play. But Dolphy Welsh have an offensive upside. Dale Weiss, a tough customer who can hit. Well, here's an opportunity with that icing in the fourth line for the Taylor Hall, Arcabello, and Hemsky line to try to get some offensive zone time here. Win a draw if they can. Keep the pressure on. Take advantage of this matchup. Hall and Hemsky on the wings. Maybe they'll earn some more ice time. At Vancouver fourth line, they got the face off, got the puck out, and they get the heck off. Arcabello poke checked by Henrik Sedin. Nice play by Hall to step in front of Henrik and get the puck. Dale Weiss gets it back. He's the last member of the fourth line that wasn't able to change. And he'll stay here, takes a pass, takes a shot, and Dubnik made the save. Weiss with the Sedin twins. Daniel kicks back to the blue line. Ryan Stanton on the other side. Kevin Bieksa towards the net. An easy save for Dubnik. Daniel Sedin takes over. Henrik Stanton came into the front of the net. Yannick Hansen has now come on for Weiss, and he goes to the front of the goal. Daniel shot ricocheted off a pad and went to the boards. The Exa left the puck for the captain, snatched away by Arcabello, and a penalty on the play as Kevin DX is dumped in the corner. And the Vancouver Canucks are about to go to the power play for the first time in the game. And Scorla is going to have two penalties here. One to the owners, Philip Larson, for boarding, and Henrik Sedin is gone for interference. Uh, a little bit of a call later after the hit. Well, there's a lot of confusion, but here's the interference call. Just a little pick on Arcabello. There's the hit afterwards. But it's the Vancouver Canucks were thinking they were going to the power play until Henrik Sedin got a little tap on the back. Yeah, he was going over to get ready for the power play. I did get a little tap to say, hey, and you're gone too. And he argued that all the way over to the Sin Bin. So it's four on four hockey here. And the Canucks out shooting Edmonton 19 to five. Kessler and Higgins, the forwards for Vancouver. 
Arcabello and Hall for Edmonton. Van Hamus and Chris Tanev, the defensive pair. Schultz and Ference for Edmonton. Andrew Ference steps up to center. Moves in on Tanev, and Tanev blocked his shot. Ference will stay in deep. And now he'll have to get back, and Hamus is trying to prevent him from getting back. A long pass to Kessler. Higgins heads to the net. Hit the post. And there's a penalty on the play. Chris Higgins did well to corral that. Edmonton, 26. And Mark Arcabello is going to get a penalty for slashing on the back check. And watch the read by Arcabello here. His defenseman, Ference, is in, and he doesn't read that he's got to get back in time to protect the two-on-one. And instead, a slash to the hands as Higgins tries to control the rolling puck goes by and off the post. The crowd reacted, the horn went on, but clearly that did not go in the back of the net. That's one of those reads, Jim, four on four. If your defenseman jumps up in the play like Ference did there, the forward's got to make sure he gets back and protects. Nice little bit of professional interference by Dan Hamhuis to make sure that Andrew Ference wasn't going to get in the back check. And he was going to be the last guy easily. So a four on three power play, a little bit different look. Vancouver's power play has been dreadful most of the season, but seven goals in the last nine games, although it hasn't scored in two. Ryan Kessler, Daniel Sedin, Jason Garrison, Chris Higgins goes to the front of the net. Now they're set up. Daniel switches spots with Garrison. Garrison's got the big shot, couldn't take it there. Daniel slaps up, scores, tipped in front. A power play goal on a deflection of a Daniel Sedin shot, and Vancouver opens the scoring. It's 1 0 Canucks. Well, that's the third time this year the Vancouver Canucks have scored with a four on three. Look at the positioning of Higgins, and that pushes Devin Dubnik back in his crease. Dubnik comes back down. Nice control, the shooting lane not quite taken away on that quick pass back. And that's off the skate of Nick Schultz. A tough break for the Edmonton Oilers defenseman as he ends up deflecting it through the five hole. As Dubnik was reacting to where the shot was going to be, it gets tipped back in the five hole to give the Vancouver Canucks a 1-0 lead. So you got to figure that Daniel and Henrik Sedin would get on the scoreboard against Edmonton. They usually do. It's two points a game for their careers against the Oilers, but here's a two-on-one chance for Edmonton. Jordan Eberle with Nugent Hopkins. What a play by Tanev. Eberle waited too long, and Tanev slid over and charged the puck loose. In deep is Jeff Petrie. Eberle after the puck. Nugent Hopkins snapped the shot, got a deflection, and it went in behind the net off Dan Hamhuis. Hamhuis will start out four on four to center. Daniel Sedin has stayed on here. He's got Mike Santarelli with him. Tanev against everyone. Harrison and Kessler get assists on Daniel Sedin's goal. Daniel's 11th of the season. And Henrik is out of the penalty box. So is Philip Larson. The teams are back to five on five. Halfway through the second period in Vancouver on a special Friday night edition of Hockey Night in Canada. Canucks on a five-game winning streak and up one to nothing. Anton Belloff with his shoot in the long wall play the puck. Up the middle of Cassian off his foot. Advancing with the puck is David Booth. This is a two-on-two. Two. Richardson makes it a three-on-two and couldn't get a shot. David Perron caught him from behind. Booth centering back to the blue line. BX is shot off a leg. Puck's bouncing around like a pinball. And Richardson turns, holds it in. That got up high and hit Kevin Bieksa. And now he's got to get back. Alish Hemsky with David Perron. Cut into the middle. Takes the shot wide of the net. Bieksa got back. Couldn't clear the puck. Justin Schultz kept it in. Perron centering. Quick shot. And a block by Ryan Stanton on Ryan Jones. One-timer in front of the net. Bieksa turns away from Jones for check. At center. Schultz stepped up in front of Booth to dump the puck back in for Edmonton. The exit to Dale Weiss. And the puck got by him to center. Philip Larson. 
And Taylor Hall into the middle. Arcabello to Jones, and he had nothing to do but take a sharp angle shot. He couldn't get lucky and bank one in. Andrew Ferentz on the other side. Here's Larson with a shot up high. Missed the net with lots of traffic. Oilers started to come off. Ferentz was hit hard by Dale Weiss. Stanton couldn't clear the puck. Jones held it in. Hall goes after it. Thrown into the corner. Jones gets there first. Philip Larson takes the shot just wide again. Good pressure by Edmonton now. Puck's held in by Archibello. Trying to get out is Jeremy Welsh, and he does get to center. Larson chased by Zach Dalton. So that's a to change. Welsh got a big hit. But Larson got the puck out to center. Archibello, Jones. And the play's broken up by Yannick Weber, who got the puck to the blue line. Now he's got a chance to get it out. Good pushback shift by the Edmonton Oilers back to back. And the two best chances, though, came on the stick of Jones. Not necessarily the best of the goal scorers that was out there, but he ended up with the puck on a couple of one time plays. Yoensu, the enigmatic Yakupov, who carries the puck in, takes the shot, big rebound, cleared away by Garrison before Jeff Petrie could get there. Jesse Yoensu, Anton Beloff. And Jeff Petrie forced deep into his own zone by this Kessler Santarelli Higgins line. Pass intercepted at center. And Yoensu poked it loose and it comes back the other way for Edmonton. Dale Yakupov, Gordon's in front of the net. Puck goes to the front of the net and was tipped. And wide of the goal and Yannick Weber sends it down the ice and he'll take an icing call here. As the Oilers finally start to put some pressure on shift after shift. Well, they had a couple of great chances and might be a 1-1 game had it not been the play of Chris Tanev here. You could see it for a second there. Everly had to settle the puck down, took a look at Luongo, and then just waited too long as Tanev came across. Another look at the goal as Boyd Gordon can't get the shooting lane and a bad break off the foot of Schultz and past Dubin. Nugent Hopkins tried to go straight ahead on the faceoff. And the Canucks stopped that. Henrik Sedin dumps the puck in to finish off a line change here. So that Daniel can come on, and he just about got a hold of the puck. The Oilers tried to clear it. And it Hansen hovering around here as well. David Perron. Justin Schultz starts out. Ryan Nugent Hopkins at center into the middle. David Perron and Schultz right there. Everly as well. Tanev had to drop a stick. Not sure if it's broken or not. He's picking it up. I think he got a stick in the face by Perron. Here comes the trainer. Hamu shot. That's blocked. And now he's caught up by his one man back. It's Kevin Bieksa. Could be a four on one. David Perron shoots. Great save. Long go. Beauty of a glove save on the hottest of the Oilers, David Perron. A chance at one in, and Dan Hamhus got caught. David Perron, the shooter. Luongo makes his biggest save of the night on Hockey Night in Canada. The one thing that Perron's been doing with that stick very effectively is scoring goals. 12 in his last 16 games, but you can see he didn't quite get it up high enough. Luongo out at the top of his blue, and... Great glove save to keep this a one-goal game. Scramble draw on the ensuing faceoff, and Perron has the puck again. Andrew Ferentz with a shot, and Luongo stops play. Not a bad idea on a night when his team is dominating the faceoff circle. You mentioned before about the days off and back-to-back -back games. I think this is the absolute right move to have Roberto Luongo in tonight. Got a week off, gave him some good rest, hasn't played since Sunday, and you know Eddie Lack is really developing into a very solid backup that John Tortorella trusts, likes his attitude, likes his swagger, and I'm sure you'll see a, a lot more of lack as the season goes along. But not necessarily. But not tomorrow, I don't think. Yeah, and <laughs> not necessarily in the traditional time you would see a backup, as John mentioned with Andy at the outset tonight. Reserves the right to do things a little differently, and it's been very different here than everybody thought John Tortorella would be. Mount Tortorella has not erupted. He's no. been thoughtful. He's been revealing, far more revealing than a lot of coaches in what he gives out in his daily press conferences. What a difference, huh? I mean, I, I think that firing really shocked him and hurt him. But and don't he, you think he's more like the Tortorella you knew from your days at Buffalo absolutely. and in Tampa? He was definitely like that as a player. I had him as an assistant coach in Buffalo, and 
I found him very knowledgeable, very engaging, and I just think the shortness that he had with the media in New York and the cutting of the heads just got to him. He almost became a character yeah. himself. He just waited it, right? He, he, he wanted a stopwatch for his press conference every day. Yesterday, he spent 20 minutes, half an hour, answering every question and good, honest answers. And that's been a daily thing for him here. A half an hour was about the whole year last year. Yeah, it was all it? added together. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And don't you think at the other bench, Dallas Aikens dealing with, you know, a different start in the National Hockey League. And I, I think he felt that this team would be a little bit better off than they have been. And that's been a tough challenge as well. Oilers have been better in this second period, but they're behind one to nothing on a special Friday night edition of Hockey Night in Canada. You know, Craig McTavish said when he took over the job that it, things would change, and one of the things that has changed very much is bringing in David Perron. He's the type of player that's agitated. He gets in, he plays in those tough areas, and for Dallas Aiken, he's been a guy that he has been co he's been pointing to as a coach of the way that this Oiler team needs to play. And what a great start it's been for him in his new uniform. On a pace to hit the mid-30s in goal scoring. And just the style. I mean, this team has needed a little more grit, a little more sandpaper, and he's given it. Here's Alex Hemsky with Taylor Hall. Hemsky hangs on too long. By the time he shot, there were a couple of Canucks around him, and Zach Cassian blocked it. He gets the puck to center. Taylor Hall gets the puck in deep. Ryan Stanton is back. Hemsky's right on him. And the aerial intended for Cassian ends up on a bench. Well, this line has started to get a little offense for the Oilers as well as Taylor Hall getting some ice time and some speed in the neutral zone. And Hemsky there, so often you, you think you want him to shoot. He's got such good skills with the puck. But that was another good example of he just delayed, delayed, delayed. And finally took himself out of the shooting lane and couldn't get a shot on goal. Both teams make changes. The city line comes on for Vancouver. Boyd Gordon to take the face off against Henrik. And Gordon won the draw. He's good at that, but 58%. Bell off with a shot that was blocked. Daniel Sedin will start out. Yannick Hansen. Speedster coming up from behind the play. Fired a shot over top of the net. Daniel. Henrik missed it. And Uemsa along the boards against the pitching Yannick Weber who kept the puck in. Henrik trying to fight off Boyd Gordon. Daniel ran into Henrik. And they all fell down. And Boyd Gordon got the puck to center. Canucks will start a change here. Daniel tips the puck in deep. Fell off up the boards. Daniel couldn't hold the puck in. Here's Neil Yakupov with Gordon and Uensu. Turn in first man back with Dan Hamhuis. A good dependable pair they've been on defense. Nugent Hopkins. Waited too long and got nailed by Daniel Sedin of all people late in his shift and knocked over at the blue line. Here's Kessler straight up the middle. And he tried to pass for Santarelli. The play is just offside. Monday night at 8 on CBC TV. Enjoy Dr. Seuss festive fable How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Then at 8.30, a pair of skates grant a boy three wishes in the magic hockey skates. For our full holiday schedule, visit cbc.ca slash holiday. Well, Daniel Sedin got his first goal in six games, and that is a hit that you don't see that often from him. Lined him up and knocked him down. Tanev chased by Nugent Hopkins. John Tortorella has chased this matchup a little bit as much as he ever chases a matchup to get Kessler's line against Nugent Hopkins. When he's had a faceoff, Dallas Aikens has tried to avoid it. Here's Kessler trying to go around Philip Larson and does and is poked away by Devin Dubnik. And the puck's gathered in by Jordan Everly. They'll play it back to calm things down. Andrew Ferentz up the board, didn't get it out. Dale Reese heads to the net. Kessler stopped by Dubnik. Oilers turned the puck over trying to get out of their own zone and Devin Dubnik bailed them out. Dale Reese was on in the midst of a change and now he's on with his fourth line partners and he's battling for the puck against Andrew Ferris. That was a great read by Weiss though, wasn't it? Sure was. Pulled him across, not quite long enough. Kessler had knocked the stick out of Larson's hand in the corner and beat him to the front of the net. 
And Dubnik made a terrific save. Had to make a few of them tonight. Jeremy Welsh turns to the net. Zach Dolpe is there. A little cycle in the corner. This fourth line has seen quite a bit of action against the Oilers tonight. A little backhand pass to the front of the net. Dolpe. Walsh didn't see anything he liked, so he turned away but kept the puck. Ryan Stanton, a slap pass, loose puck in front. Here's Weiss again, stopped by Dubnik. Puck still loose, and Hemsky finally gets it and gets it out, and that Vancouver fourth line will earn a little more ice time. I'll be out of Ohio State, Welsh out of Union College. Dale Reese, tough Western Hockey League graduate. Brad Richardson to Chris Tanev, his shot. Blocked, he might get another crack at it. Looks to the net. Dubnik with two big saves off David Booth, who was in so close. Good positional saves by Dubnik. Well, it's been a big period again for Devin Dubnik in keeping the Oilers on the road into this game. Kessler in the corner watching take the body on Larson. Larson's forced to drop his stick as he's getting it. Kessler goes to the front. And a nice job by Dubnik not overplaying the play to the other side by Weiss. And then in the front of the net, two Vancouver Canucks to one Edmonton Oilers defenseman. And you can see Dubnik hugs his post and able to grab the rebound before the Canucks can get it. Oilers were better in the first half of this period, but the Canucks have come on with very good shifts here. Led by their fourth line to a large degree. Third and fourth line back-to-back -back shifts there with most of the time in the offensive zone. Got him back on the attack. Now it's the Sedin line. And the puck is out of play with just a minute nine seconds to go in the second period. The Boston Bruins are in town. Their coach Claude Julian is here watching the game tonight. It's the Bruins and the Vancouver Canucks tomorrow on Hockey Night in Canada. You know, it's, it's amazing the, third game for triple header. the consistency of the Sedins and you know, ironically Daniel this year had six games where he didn't get a point. That's the first time since 2003 that that's happened. And you just assume you're going to get a point probably about a, what 180 points between the two of them guaranteed. And they're in the 20s in the NHL scoring but they're only a few points out of the top 10 where they usually are. But they haven't done very much this week. And you know what? I think they miss Alex Burroughs to an agree. He's been a very dependable right winger for them. Absolutely. And I think for John Tortorella, he's done the routine. He had David Booth up there for a while on the wing. Yannick Hansen the last couple of games. But to me, Burroughs is that fit that plays the style that complements them extremely well. A lot of the armchair general managers and coaches around town want to see Zach Cassian play with the Twins. But he was... Tortorella was very forthright yesterday in saying and until he gets to be a better defensive player, he's not going to be able to play with him. It's the trust factor, right? We, we saw the ice time that the Sedins play. And they play against good players. Third and fourth in the National Hockey League, so that winger has to be reliable. And they spend a lot of time in the attacking zone. If you could be guaranteed they'd stay there all the time, you could put him on there. Up the middle, here's Everly with his shot. As the Oilers gain a chance. Off the Canucks inability to clear and that puck went over the glass, but it was off the skate of Hamhuis. It was actually his stick, was but it? It, it was like a deflection, not a shot. This is an interesting read by the official. And you can see David Prong going right away and asking. Nice forecheck by Prong, creates a chance. Hamhuis go, goes down to force the turnover. But because it wasn't a shot by Hamhuis, that's the call. And the other bench, Dallas Aikens getting the description of why there isn't a power play. They want a different interpretation. Well, the Canucks have been dominant. The chances we had at 15 to 6 for Vancouver. This is a dangerous game for them. Ahead just one to nothing, having outshot the owners 26 to 10. The only goal by Daniel Sedin on the power play. Mark Arcabello. On to the left wing, Taylor Hall with some speed. Steered wide by Tanev, who fell down. Hall, centering pass. Petrie couldn't bury it. And as the horn sounds, second period comes to an end. A couple of great chances in the last minute for Edmonton. And Petrie would like to have this one back. The speed of Hall created some time and space there, and that 
little deflection off the stick of Garrison might have just upset Petrie's timing. Otherwise, he had a wide open net. Vancouver got the only goal of the period and the game. Daniel Sedin on a four on three power play. A one nothing Canuck lead on CBC's Hockey Night in Canada. Welcome back to Hockey Night in Canada. One nothing game. Vancouver Canucks over the Edmonton Oilers heading into the final frame. It's still anybody's game. I spoke to Mike Sullivan, assistant coach of the Vancouver Canucks. He said he cautioned the team heading into tonight's game not to get into a track meet with the Oilers because he said they're an opportunistic team. So he is proud of what the Canucks are doing right now, keeping the puck possession, keeping it in the Oilers zone. So he said just do much of that heading into the third period. And I asked about that one goal lead. He said not concerned at all. We're used to these kinds of situations we can stay poised and calm. Jim. It is too, Andy. They've been a very good defensive team. The last homestand, though, they had a little trouble with some of these games getting away. They seem to have corrected that out on the road and certainly in this homestand, but you know they'd be a little more comfortable if they could get some insurance here. Ryan Kessler, 10-2 and in face-offs in the game so far. He and Santorelli and Higgins start this period against the Nugent Hopkins line. David Perron deep in his own zone. Nice bounce back night for Devin Dubnik, who was pulled last night. Philip Larson, defenseman, jumps up on the play, leading a three on two, and he's poke checked by Dan Hamhus. And Mike Santarelli gets the puck back through center. Well, Perron was on the left side. He wanted that puck. He had a little open daylight. Here's a chance for Santarelli in a sliding block by Ferentz, and the stick of Santarelli exploded as he shot. Ryan Stanton. He and Chris Tanev, two great pickups. Tanev was signed as a free agent out of Rochester Institute of Technology, and Stanton picked up on waivers from Chicago. So two players are playing in your sixth defense regularly that you didn't have to give anything up for. And they're both getting a lot of minutes again tonight. Taylor Hall, checked by Kevin Bieksa. Mark Arcobello gets the puck deep. Bieksa will feed Stanton. And he couldn't clear the puck. Kept in by Alish Hemsky. Trying to feed Taylor Hall. Cross ice pass to the defense. Belloff put it on net. Nice save by Luongo. And Belloff just floated one into the net. And it got there all right. Hall knocked the puck out of the air. And the Canucks get it back. Here's Henrik Sedin with Daniel. They're arguing over it at center. And they decide to dump it in and go off. Jeff Petrie is back for the puck. Canucks back off defensively. Petrie for Yakupov. That was knocked down, but it came to Boyd Gordon. His shot is stopped by Luongo. Yuensu is checked. Zach Cassian out to center to David Booth. Richardson on the fly, and the pass was behind him. And back checking is Jesse Yuensu, and he gets the puck. Turned back by David Booth and Brad Richardson. Justin Schultz will try and move on. He gets the puck to center. Boyd Gordon crunched against the boards by Zach Cassian, who took the puck away. And David Booth picks up some speed, moving in on Nick Schultz. He'll stop up, take the shot, tipped in. Zach Cassian gets the goal. Not a hard shot by David Booth, but Cassian was in a perfect position to tip the puck in, and Vancouver has a little insurance, two to nothing. And if you judge by the reaction of Devin Dubnik, it's, it's like he lost sight of the puck, never saw that the puck was coming to the net. The big body in front by Cassian and Schultz with him, and it's just perfect timing. Cassian starts the play, gets inside position, and watches Schultz trying to battle him up top, doesn't get the stick down, and Devin Dubnik late to react, didn't have his stick in the five hole. And after a couple of good shifts in the offensive zone early, the Canucks end up making it a two goal game. Zach Cassian, sixth of the season at 226. That's one where period. Dubnik's got to be a little bit more aggressive on that one. It looked like he got caught looking past the puck and didn't see it. David Booth gets the only assist, so Cassian and Booth. Two of the players Vancouver really needs to step up and give some, give them some depth. Team up on the two nothing goal. That's such a killer too, because it was really a nothing looking play, wasn't no, it? No, you're right about that. And now the Oilers have to be a little more aggressive and maybe take a few more chances. Canucks break out four on two through center. 
led by Kevin Bieksa, and just ahead of him offside was Mike Santarelli. This is where it kills you as a team, too, and the Oilers have dealt with this a lot, where it's a nothing-looking play, and your goaltender's not able to make the save. Look at the reaction of Dubna. He's late, doesn't see it coming through, and that's one where if he's up and he's aggressive, check out the body language with the head down looking at the ice. And too often for this Oiler team, this early part of the season, that's been the case. Well, Zach Cassian, his first goal after going eight without. Tip off the boards, and Vancouver got a turnover again. Hamhus is blocked by Everly, who's going straight up the middle. Tanev comes straight over to him and forces him to the boards. He eludes Hamhus. Great pass across the ice. Perron couldn't handle it. And it can gave the puck to David Perron, then pulled him over or tried to. Held in by Bell off with a shot. Fought off by Luongo, but there's a rebound. Ryan Nugent Hopkins in traffic, got the puck towards the net. But it didn't get to Luongo, and Andrews feeds it up the boards to Daniel Sedin. Slowly dumps the puck in, Henrik will go after it. Petrie's the first man back. Anton Belloff. Here's Taylor Hall. Finds some space to pick up speed, gains the attacking line. Petrie stretched out to stay on side. But the Canucks get the puck back anyway. Great pass to Cassian. From Kevin Bieksa and into the slot. Richardson turns and fires. It goes into the corner and the puck will come back to Garrison. His shot off a stick wide of the net. Richardson. Kevin Bieksa. Garrison again. Screen shot. Not enough of a screen. Gubik was able to steer that aside. And the orders clear the puck. Bieksa again dumps the puck in. Vancouver wants a change. Oilers do the same thing. As Nick Schultz comes out of his own zone, Dustin Schultz to nail Yakupov and he dumps the puck in. Yes, he wins. Yannick Weber got to the puck before he did. Stanton up the boards to Dale Reese. And Vancouver's fourth line is out again. Welsh, Delphi, and Weiss. Stanton feeds the puck to Zach Delphi. Jeremy Welsh dumps it in. Oilers trying to get right back out. Philip Larson moved the puck up the middle. The exit for Reese missed the pass. Canucks are changing. Andrew Ferentz to center dumps it in. Garrison has a look around as he gets back. Sam Gagne is the first to try and forecheck him. Kessler line is back on for Vancouver. Jason Garrison. Chris Higgins couldn't handle the pass. Petrie to Belloff. And the owners get back into the attacking zone. Perron chasing Garrison, but he made the play. And the Canucks, Santarelli tipped the puck over the line. Kessler gathered it in, passes back, Higgins scores! Wow! Lightning fast, Kessler got to the puck. And Higgins wasted no time in the release. It's 3-0 Vancouver. Now that's three five-hole goals on Devin Dubnik. Well, you can see how quickly the chemistry of this line. Kessler didn't even look. A no-look pass behind him. He knew exactly where his winger was. Play along the board started with Higgins. Kept the play alive. Santorelli makes the play at the blue line. And then a no-look pass. And Dubnik deep in his net. Not able to close the five-hole in time. Petrie just inches away from getting the stick, and the quick release beats Dubin. Higgins, ninth of the season, and now the Canucks really do have some insurance. They are 17-0-1 this season when they score three goals or more. Penalty coming up here, and it's against Vancouver. Bruce Vancouver had the puck when the whistle went, a high sticking call. It might be an Edmonton call against Nick Schultz. No, it's going to be Vancouver on Hockey Night in Canada. Noted Swedish goon Henrik Sedin is in the penalty box for the second time tonight. This for a high stick on Nick Schultz. That's the reaction of Schultz as his head went up. And that's why everyone was looking at each other. Schultz even almost started going to the box. He wasn't sure who was getting it. But a chance for Edmonton to get a little bit of momentum. Get going into this third. I think he was going to the box trying to bleed and 
get four. Second order power play 0 for 1. Justin Schultz. Again, four forwards and an uh, offensive defenseman. And Hall got run over by Kessler. Perron trying to get into the puck. He's caught. Everly. Nugent Hopkins. Now the orders are set up. Justin Schultz slides into the middle. Perron is screening. Jordan Everly. Cross ice. Nugent Hopkins thought about shooting. They couldn't get it away. Everly with a quick shot that was blocked by Chris Tanev. And the penalty killers change up as they move the puck down the ice. And you see with a 3 nothing lead now, they're even more so aggressive on the penalty kill. Not often do you throw a lunging body check when you're killing the penalty. Kessler's done a little bit of everything there. A couple of assists, 86% on faceoffs, three shots on goal, killing penalties. He continues his hot streak. Here's Santarelli, shorthanded on Philip Larson. He's got help. Richardson is with him, and Larson takes the man to the boards. All right, Cabello trying to help out. The valuable seconds tick away in the penalty to Henrik Sedin. And there's that intensity level again on the power play. You've got to raise your level and continue to compete. Canucks get the puck again. The owners can't get set up. They had the one chance that Everly got the one-timer, and Tanev blocked it. And they're within 30 seconds of being out of power play time here. Alex Hemsky. Sam Gagne getting some power play time here. Yakupov dumps the puck in. Arcabello. Hard around. Yakupov. Checked by Daniel Sedin. Gagne. Arcabello rink wide. Hemsky into the middle. Larson shot. Malongo's got it. And he stops playing. Here's where you were talking about Kessler on a penalty kill with a hit. Well, you don't expect it. I mean, Taylor Hall's just trying to stop up, make a play, and all of a sudden he sees the Vancouver sweater coming flying after him. Frustration right now. Yakupov trying to get after a loose puck. Can't win the battle, and the frustration for number 64 continues. Anton Beloff off the draw. Quick shot by Petrie went wide. Henrik Sedin is back on the ice out of the penalty box. One shot for the Oilers on the power play. They're 0 for 2 tonight. And a hand pass stops play. The Canucks with a 3 to nothing lead and a 29-14 advantage in shots on goal. Well, you mentioned coming into this period, it was a dangerous period. And... Early on here, experienced teams just try to come in and close the deal, knowing that if you can get through this game, you got a tough game tomorrow. The Oilers traveled last night, played a tough battling game against the Boston Bruins, and see here if they can mount a comeback. It better start pretty soon. Brad Richardson, five on five to the blue line, held in by Everly. Here's Nugent Hopkins. Justin Schultz shoots. Great save by Longo. Haven't been a bulk of them tonight, but he's been pretty good. We've seen the defenseman sliding across, and it's Ham Hughes again who helps out his goaltender. He takes away the bottom. Watch Ham Hughes go across, takes away the bottom of the net for Luongo, and Luongo able to stay up. And once again, the glove makes a great save on Schultz coming down from the point. Dan Hamus in his 31st birthday today he was invited to the Team Canada camp in the summer. Didn't have a great start to the season, but he's been his usual steady self here the last little while. And I think he's probably back in the conversation, especially if Mike Babcock likes the lefties and righties. He's a left-handed defenseman, and there aren't as many in the NHL. That pairing with Tanev right now is John Tortorella was mentioning the progress that Tanev has made, he, he's been excellent again tonight as well. Like the coach before him, he really likes Chris Tanev. Who, as Kevin Bieksa once described, could play the game with a cigarette in his mouth. <laughs> Side of the net, David Booth stopped by Dubnik. A reference to how casual he looks. Mark Arcabello. On the right side, Nick Schultz is in deep through the puck out in front. No chance for Yakupov to get a shot. Chip and chase to center. Here's Zach Dolpe into the middle, return pass, and he shot the puck into the corner from a sharp angle. 
But Vancouver's fourth line has got as much ice time tonight as they have in a long time. And they've deserved it. Dolpy, Welsh, and Weiss. Uh, track meet Mike Sullivan didn't want to get into. Might start now as Oilers got to take some chances. Vancouver's using their speed as well on some transition. Philip Larson told to wheel. The Canucks were on a change. So he wheeled out of his own zone, got the puck ahead. Here's Eberly. Nice move on Stanton, but he's stopped by Luongo. Past the midway mark of the third period. Vancouver leads 3 to nothing on CBC's Hockey Night in Canada from Vancouver. Chris Tanev got a great find on the Vancouver defense. Hey, think of the little things. Good active stick defending and blocking shots is always a hallmark of good defensive play. You've seen a number of times the defense sliding across and taking away chances and also getting involved offensively. Three shots on the night overall. A neat and tidy game for number eight. As it often is with him, and for about a half a dozen straight games, he's been over 20 minutes, well over 20 minutes, especially in the absence of Alex Hedler. Canucks have mostly used five defensemen with Edler out. Sixth tonight, Yannick Weber. But it's Ham Hughes and Tanev on the ice right now, and the Oilers really need to press here with just over nine minutes to go down by three. And you've got Paul back up with Nugent Hopkins and Everly here. For obvious reasons. Here's Nugent Hopkins. That was cut off by Dan Ham Hughes at a good defensive play. And that pair does it again for Vancouver, and now they'll change. So will the owners. Arcabello now has Yakupov and Perron with him. A shoot in. Canucks get the puck back. Up the middle. Kessler to Santarelli. Chris Higgins gets the puck deep. Petrie is back. Santarelli chasing him, trying to flush him out. A turnover kept in by Weber, and he shoots the puck wide of the net. Into the corner. Higgins overskated the puck. Yakupov back defensively up the boards to Mark Arcabello. And Kessler took the puck away in the neutral zone. Santarelli, three on two, back into the attacking zone. Higgins, Santarelli, his stick was checked and he chopped it wide. I don't think he was expecting that pass to get through, though. Probably thought it was going to go the other way yeah. to Kessler. Here's David Perron. Stopped at center by Brad Richardson. David Booth couldn't get the puck. Gordon did on the back check. Joensu. Game center dumps the puck in for Edmonton. Alongo shoveled it into the corner. And Bieksa plays the puck to Richardson. Cassian with an outlet across the ice. And Booth will have to come back and get the puck. But Vancouver gets safely out. Now the owners can't get possession in the attacking zone as Cassian shoots just wide of the net. Joensu will chase Bieksa. Bieksa has gone into time-killing mode here. Put up a wall defensively. Yoensu turns. Justin Schultz. In on Ryan Stanton. The drop for Gagne. He put it on net. Dolby up the boards. Fourth line's back on again. As the Canucks roll four here in the third period. Jeremy Welsh to Weiss and a shot on goal. Devin Dubin made the save. Yeah, those two extra goals make a big difference. Weiss put the puck off the post, and this line has been unfortunate not to get a goal tonight. And we got the Bruins waiting to play uh, tomorrow. Fourth line shift's going to be important. Yeah, 3 nothing lead. Use everybody. Get ready for another game tomorrow. Make sure you get the sixth consecutive win and deal with the Bruins tomorrow. Barrett's on top of Daniel Sedin, who probably thought there should have been a penalty there. A uh, good nine call. Well, you know, one thing the Vancouver defense has done a really nice job though of that just dealing with the pressure getting the puck out and not allowing any long shifts in their own zone there's Daniel Sedin with a shot and a nice save by Devin Dubnik you really haven't seen the Oilers to get any territorial play no. have they? they haven't had any second or third chances on the long go John Tortorella calls his defense the engine of his team and they've been running just fine tonight as the net has knocked off and play has stopped Coming up tomorrow on Sports Weekend, the road to the Olympics takes a turn through Canada. We'll have World Cup events for BC and Alberta. Luge from the Whistler Sliding Center, followed by freestyle ski cross at Nakiska. It all begins at 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific.
on Sports Weekend. Well, when you get an opportunity to play, you take advantage of it. And this line's been pretty effective. Here's another quick release by Weiss. Goes by the glove hand of Dub Dubnik, but off the post. David Perron's in to take the face off against Ryan Kessler, and he beat him. That's been a rarity for the Oilers tonight. They're all out here with Luke Gazdick and Ryan Jones. Kessler held the puck in with a shot. That's stopped by Bella. So Jim, you talked about ice time, and Yannick Weber now is in that 11-12 minute mark too. So even on the back end, that's not usually the case with that third pair, is it? Andrew Alberts has been around five or six. And there's Longo swimming. And he does a stroke to get out there and grab onto the puck as the owners have one of their rare flurries in this third period around the net. And Luke Gazdick is being held off by the referee, so he can't cause any more trouble in there against the Vancouver Canucks around their goaltender. 3-0, the Canucks lead, 32-18. The shot's on goal on CBC's Hockey Night in Canada. They're pretty tidy night defensively for the Vancouver Canucks, and here's how they got the 3-0 lead. Well, I took advantage on a four-on-three power play, a shot from the point to flex in off of Schultz, and then a harmless-looking play that Zach Cassian on a turnaround to flex that in, and a nifty no-look pass and quick shot by Higgins, and a tight one-goal game in the third has been broken open by two good, solid goals to make it a 3-0 game. That last scrum around the net is really... One of only a couple that have had all night. Have, have the, the Oilers had any more than that around the net? No, Luongo's made a couple of great saves. The glove hand saves that have been able to keep this a neat and tidy game. But that is about the first time you saw second and third chances in front of him. Most of the chances off the rush. David Booth with a pass that hit a skate and gets up onto the Canuck bench. Well, one thing for Edmonton, and this is a tough back-to-back -to -back against two really solid teams. And as we said earlier, for Dallas Aikens, it doesn't get any easier. This is a very tough road trip coming up. This is the first game of four. And after this, you look at the records of the next three opponents. Even though Colorado may be slumping down a bit, that trip through California is a tough one these days playing Anaheim and Los Angeles back to back. The trip through the Western Conference. <laughs> yeah, look anywhere. around, you're right. Look at Vancouver you know, sitting in that eighth spot at 41 points. This is a really important game for them too. That's going to be quite the battle, isn't it? Try to get those top three spots in each division and then secure a wild card. Not many in the Western Conference lose, especially when they play the East. Yes, Iwensu takes a shot that went off a leg, didn't get to the net, and Chris Higgins for Vancouver couldn't get the puck by Sam Gagne, but he got it back. Weber up the middle. Schultz gets a return pass, and both teams are changing on the fly, so Justin Schultz delays. Andrew Ferris. Dallas Higgins sending Jones and Gazdick right back on here after a good shift the last time. They get another one quickly with Mark Arcabello right now. Andrew Ferentz is back in his own zone, pushed down. Here's Weiss again, turns, shoots. Dolphy trying to tuck the puck in. And his fourth line for Vancouver has been all around the net, but they haven't been able to score, especially Weiss. Here's Dan Hamhues walking in, screenshot, stopped by Devin Dubnik. And Andrew Ferentz gets the puck and puts it out to center. Luke Gazdick dumps the puck in. He had a great tilt last night, a fight with Milan Lucic that hurt Lucic, and that doesn't happen very often. No, that, that, that's a big part of the Oilers coming back and getting into that game. Hard centering pass went off Dubnik. Henrik Sedin fed the puck in front. It's still there up for grabs, and Archibello sends it out to center Taylor Hall. Long go out to play the puck and gets it to Daniel Sedin along the boards. And the Canucks Chris Tanev calmly through center. Henrik trying to find Hansen or Daniel couldn't. Here's Taylor Hall. One on one snaps a shot off a stick over the net. And Ryan Stanton bounces the puck to center. Time certainly the enemy of the orders right now. Vancouver's been really tidy with this three to nothing lead. Not spending much time in their own zone at all. 
one and done mostly for the Oilers. When they've got inside the blue line, here's Zach Cassie. He'll just cycle the puck back in the corner for Brad Richardson. And then come in to help. Got away from Nugent Hopkins, has Booth in front of the net. Played the puck back to Kevin Bieksa. His slap shot was tipped right on by Booth and a nice save by Dubnik. Nice save and a nice clear, too. Dubnik was more aggressive on that play and good job with the stick to get the rebound. Oilers couldn't clear the puck. Schultz couldn't get it out. Vancouver holds it in. Zach Cassian for David Booth. Turns along the boards and tried to feed the puck to Richardson, but it deflects off a stick and out of play. Figure skating icons Kurt Browning, Elvis Stoiko, and many others perform live music by Holly Cole. Watch Holiday Festival on Ice Monday at 9 on CBC TV. For our full holiday schedule, visit cbc.ca slash holiday. Well, the four check again. Dolphy in the corner knocks Ferentz off the puck, gets himself to the front of the net, and watch Dubnik does a nice job of tracking that across and two good chances down in the slot. Part of the reason Vancouver's been able to have a stretch here where they've played probably their best hockey of the season is they've been able to get some consistency to their lines with the exception of Burroughs being gone from the first line. Booth has stepped up a little bit. Dolphy took a shot here that he didn't get it away off his stick. Cassian's been a pretty good fit on a third line, so they've been able to keep groups together for a few games. And as you mentioned before, the, the defense is really, even with Edler's injury, there hasn't been a huge drop-off. The emergence of Tanev playing that top line minutes with Amhus and Stanton having the trust of his coach, it's made a real difference. There's a little mix up over at the bench. And David Booth was knocked down trying to get in the door. And an icing call against Vancouver brings the puck back into their own zone with just a minute 30 to go in the third period. And then finally the Vancouver Canucks can join their fans and start it. Starting to think about tomorrow <laughs> and the Boston Bruins. It does seem an awfully long time ago, though, that Vancouver and Boston played here in June of 2011 in the seventh game of the Cup Final. Richardson with a snapshot that's stopped by Dubnik and another one off the post. Close to being 4 nothing. You have to wonder if the Bruins are healthier now, too. They've had issues with the flu going through on this Western trip. They're missing a lot of bodies, including Sean Thornton, as was mentioned earlier. Do you think for Dallas Aikens, the development process has been a lot slower than he had hoped, obviously, early on. It'll be interesting. Will Ilya Brzezgalov be back on this road trip and maybe get an opportunity to get back in the net? Sounds like he's close. There's Dubnik with another save off this faceoff, and Ryan Jones gets the puck to center. Just a minute to go in the third period. The Canucks with 37 shots and three goals. The Oilers 19 shots and none. David Perron went after Zach Cassian. There's going to be a penalty called here in the last minute with a little mix-up over at the bench. And it was Perron and Cassian that were into it. And now and Luke Gazdick. Gazdick says, pick me. I think over this one stretch, there's no question that Luke Gazdick has found a spot on this Oiler roster. And... You can see why he's been a fan favorite with the Texas Stars and the Idaho Steelheads and wherever he's played. And another really good pickup. And you go back to last night's game, a 3-0 lead by the, by the Boston Bruins. And you know, you have to know what your role is on a club. And this was a real turning point in the game. And Milan Lucic doesn't lose too many. This is one that Gazdick caught him right there. And Lucic had to settle himself. But... You know, as a teammate, you just know that the guy's going to give you effort. He understands what his role is, and I think without question, he'll continue to find a place in this lineup for the Edmonton Oilers. David Perron, frustrated David Perron, is getting the only penalty here for roughing with 48 seconds left in the third period. Well, it's not quite the incidents you had back in October on the bench where the two going at each other, but you can see Perron tried to get something going, and he is ends up being the only guy going to the box. So the Canucks can finish this night with a man advantage. And this line that's been so close to score might get a chance here on the power play to score. Fourth line gets the power play start with a 3-0 lead. A little reward for a pretty good night. Yannick Weber with a shot. Rebound. Dale Lee scores!
rewarded with an extra shift and a power play late in the game after a basket full of chances all night. Dale Weiss buries one for nothing. A couple of chances, couple of goal posts. But it's the heavy shot of Yannick Weber, that right-handed shot one-timer that is too much for Dubnik. He can't keep a hold of it. Weiss got his position in front, and you could see the rebound there. One chance, two. And the reaction of Devin Dubnik after, the frustration just boiled over. He got the first save, got a bit of the second, but Weiss puts the third in the back of the net, and afterwards, Devin Dubnik's stick takes the brunt of the frustration. That's the problem with Vancouver's power play. They weren't using the right guys. Absolutely. Dale Weiss gets his third from Garrison and Weber. And the power play has really picked up some steam in the last 10 games. This one an afterthought in a 3-0 lead, but a big goal for a fourth line that deserved the ice time it got tonight. And now all the Canucks are trying to do is finish off the last 17 seconds of this game for Roberto Luongo. How about the defense of Vancouver, though? I mean, they're such a stingy team defensively, and that's been their winning formula. That's six games in a row now with two goals against or less than 12 of the last 15. So as much as John Tortorella has said he wants a really aggressive forecheck, he wants a good defensive team like most coaches around the National Hockey League. It's the building blocks and the foundation for sure. High stick. Brought the face off out to center ice, which is allowing the Vancouver Canucks to finish this one off. And Roberto Luongo has the third shutout of his season. The 65th of his NHL career, he's now one shutout behind Patrick Waugh. Long ways behind Marty Brodeur, but what a number. 65 shutouts, three on the season, and a very tidy defensive performance. The Vancouver Canucks have won six in a row, and on this homestand of four games, they've allowed three goals.